I live most of my life out on YouTube with only a little channel, a handful of subscribers. <laughs> I reckon they didn't like me on the platform one bit. <laughs> Back then it was mostly just me uploading short videos and me talking to my camera. <laughs> I ain't had nothing but a bed sheet, a camera, a couple of microphones down there. <laughs> Well, back then, the Young Turks used to make quite a bit of sport of me. They teased me quite a bit. I got to the point where I could feed hopper cheese and biscuits four times a week, but mostly I just sat out there making videos on my channel. Well, one night I was doing much of nothing, just staring at the YouTube, searching on a PragerU video for the Electoral College. All I could find was them there trying to make up tutorials in my suggested feed. So I logged into my YouTube account to see what was wrong with it. Turns out every video had been put in restricted. I even been unsubscribed from Lighter with Crowder, my favorite channel. I had to resubscribe quite a bit. But even when I did, I didn't receive no notifications. And had to hit the bell three times. But then I ain't seen nothing but Trevor No videos in my suggested feed. But then I just seen Red. So I hired myself a half Asian lawyer. Some people think he's half Mexican, he's half Asian. Got home in little shaped eyes and hair that stick out straight out the side of his head. Don't matter how he cut it, I reckon. He'd just puff out like that, black as pitch. Because he's half Asian and whatnot. But I had my little bill there go on in and talk with YouTube's top lawyers and parlay with them about our questions on my channel. But they didn't answer none of it. Not the restrictions, the monetization. They just kept asking us to spend more money on advertising, screaming, what'd you do, Tranny Bane, for? What'd you do, Tranny Bane, for? Hmm. I reckon that made me madder than the whole notification business. So I had Bill Richmond, he's half Asian. Some people think he's half Mexican, he's half Asian. I had him walk right on into Susan Wojcicki's office at YouTube. Mm. Sue her. Father-in-law at a wedding. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Sorry, Dad. Um, I've seen <laughs> it is. I've seen it. not only fathers, but wow. uncles and grand. It's like at a wedding. There's something. Don't trust the uncles to do that. Do not like, trust the uncles. It's no, called you alcohol. Don't. You don't. I, no, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> I have teetotaling relatives. Just, uh, like, oh, what is, well. When was that ever okay? For, <laughs> for, me, for me, it's the alcohol. You, Open bars. Yes, well, for you, it's always the alcohol. All right, we have great guests today. We have Nicole Arbor on. Boom. Yes. Boom. We have Dinesh D'Souza on. She's wow, pretty. Nice. We were going Boom. to have Artie Lang on, but, uh, uh, well, uh, it didn't work out. We're going to have him on. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna, and I don't know. We love Artie. We're going to have yes. him on next week. Obviously, this comes as no yeah. surprise, uh, so that'll that'll probably be a pre-tape. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> this this was a, uh, a pre-tape with Nicole Arbor because of... Uh, 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 Boobs. Uh, sling mug. What? <laughs> 
<laughs> because of Sling Mug Club. All right, listen, before we move on, uh, first off, question of the day. Have you found that debate, because we'll be getting into this, a clip from The Rebel, which I just think is emblematic of how the left debates. Have you found that debating with progressives has become easier and easier thanks to the talking points now becoming so predictable? Uh, and in a follow-up, Put a percentage on it. I'd like to hear from you. Mm. We often hear about the radical left and finding the center. What percentage of today's Democrats would you put under sort of the classical JFK liberal versus perpetual victim complex progressive today? Give a percentage point. Let me know. Because I think they're a significant majority. And when you're a majority, you're no longer radical fringe as it relates to the progressive wing. All right. Producing the main video studio, as always, is Jared who is not gay. Follow him on Twitter, not gay. Jared, meet us. Credit with your comments, your thoughts, your photoshops. I fulfill my legal obligations. Are you good? I'm good. I appreciate it. And we have Edgy Morgan Jr. Ew, he's yes, here. Edgy Morgan. What's the, the line? Is Today, Kay the creator. Look at that picture. That's Kay pretty, the creator. Like Bob Marley or something. Wait, what, what, like is that? That, right? what is that? What is that? No, that that looks like the singer from Corn. Maybe. <laughs> and uh, Brodigan <laughs> at Brodigan. Now Brodigan is is filling in here temporarily. You were my first hire actually at LottoWithCutter.com. Yes, I have seniority. How long have so how long have we worked together? God, I think it was since, since eighty seven. <laughs> <laughs> Has it been five years? About five years, yeah. Five, six years, yeah. Nice. So, and people, you can send him uh, your stories uh, at Brodigan. He's often the one who gets us uh, stories going in the morning. Yeah. And he just happened to be in town. Also, Cockburn is something that he's... <laughs> it's a story that is a real story. <laughs> uh, I, oh, that's awesome. I knew it. It's I never going to get old. So you wonder if this will all make sense or not later on. Nicole Arburn, next to Susan, coming. He said, I don't like that lead-in one bit. <laughs> I just got out of the clink to escape the cockburn. Um, <laughs> oh okay, God. another news before we get to that. Uh, university researchers have apparently run out of things to research. Uh, a new study suggests that people are racist against black household robots. Oh, what? It comes from Spectrum Wall-E, I guess, as a website. It says, <laughs> the findings of a new study suggest that people perceive robots with anthropomorphic features to have race. Huh. And as a result, the same race-related prejudices, <laughs> is it prejudice, uh, that well, humans prejudices. extend to robots. Well, you know what? Maybe if they weren't so lippy. She's very superficial, tearing down the wall. Hey, Roomba, do you think you could keep it down a little bit? Shut the f up! You bullshit! Motherfucker, I ain't getting in there! Alexa ain't got nothing on me! That really doesn't oh. seem like you should have it. <laughs> oh. And that's saying yeah. my Google Home has a race. But it refuses to play any other Jimmy Buffett. Does it? No matter how many times I ask for Killer Mike, it's, it's a race of. It's just Margaritaville on on a loop. <laughs> the race is college dropout. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, oh you had a point about this, Brodigan, didn't you? I don't no. think so. I don't know. I don't, I don't, see, I don't see shades of black wait, wait. and white. Only shades of what's going to oh. rise up and kill us one day. <laughs> yeah, that's you, a, the T two thing for you right there. There it, it is. I don't. It's going to be somewhere. Affirmative action. Listen, that was my favorite movie as a kid. Don't. Turning our attention to Hollywood, uh, Ryan Reynolds is attached to a revision of the film Home Alone. This one's called Stoned Alone, <laughs> centering around, you guessed it, a pothead. Though actually, it seems the title might need to be renamed as to not confuse it with the Saudi Arabian holiday cult classic, wherein a woman drove by herself. It's basically just a cross between Baby Driver and uh, Not Without My Daughter. And, uh, and Stoning of Soraya M. Yes. All of the above. <laughs> it's fun for the whole family. Oh, it's such an advanced culture. Um, so the film centers around a 20-something weed growing loser who misses the plane for his holiday ski trip first to answer the casting call was Macaulay Culkin because he does that that's what he <laughs> thinks there's look at that, look at that. there's no way Michael Jackson did not have something to do with that. no no he got a piece of no, that no, no, he touched him in a way that he will never tell reach. everybody outside the coal mine that Oh, it was not, it was very. Oh no! Where's your parents? It was very. Oh no! Yeah, they like, ever, ever since Home Alone two, I've been preparing for this role. Yeah. I'm ready. Yeah. <laughs> Bring me back. Ever since Home Alone one, he's been preparing really? for this role because <laughs> he was locked into the Home Alone two yeah. contract. I think pretty early. Yeah, hey, pretty do you remember uh, Brock Turner? Does anyone here? Because because yeah. I didn't. Does everyone here no. remember Brock yep. Turner? Yeah, I remember. Um, convicted of sexual assault for those who don't know. His his lawyer is now claiming that he only engaged in quote outer course, <laughs> not intercourse. <laughs> what is the point of that? 
Well, okay, people, this is how it's described from People, people Magazine. The lawyer defined outer course as sexual activity while clothed that can be considered a form of safe sex. Way to put a spin on it. <laughs> <laughs> and they said that Turner, uh, quote, didn't intend to rape the victim, which, it, it, to be fair, I guess we're, we're doing the definition of is, but it's, it isn't as bad as intercourse, which, of course, is sex between galaxies. And then Christopher Nolan has secured the rights to uh, incept the course, which is sex within a sex within a hand job. And, just, <laughs> and then the walls go like this, and there's rape somewhere. And also known as idea. also known as a casting call with Harvey Weinstein. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Oh my gosh. That is the dumbest. I mean, obviously you're talking about rape, so I'm not making fun of that, but that's like the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Outer course? What kind of balls do you have to have to claim that it's your defense? Apparently it doesn't matter because you're wearing <laughs> jeans anyway, so it's, it's irrelevant. <laughs> I cannot believe that this is a transcript. <laughs> imagine going forward. Imagine going forward in a court and be like, "No, yeah. no, 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 Your, Your Honor. Honor, it was out of course. That is where my client was merely dry humping her leg against her will." <laughs> <laughs> Simple battery. <laughs> it's like if you were to create a sleazy lawyer who is, who will say anything, you would create this it's, guy. Yeah, this yeah. is this is what he'd say. Yes, it's <laughs> attorney it outer course. <laughs> Jeez, oh does it God. hold water? I don't know. And, but all I did was hump a leg. And, and, uh, the, the question is, like the three months that Brock was in prison, how much outer course did he get? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if he splits the definition. Yes, there. I, uh, literally. That's Shawshank course. So in a related story, uh, a man who has no penis <laughs> <laughs> has admitted to assaulting two women who thought they were having sex with him. <laughs> well, he instead was oh using inanimate objects with the lights off. <laughs> so this comes from the, te this comes from the telegraph. <laughs> Direct quote is where... Fiscal oh. Depute Cockburn <laughs> told the court that the man had been in a relationship with two women. Another, another quote, one of the women believed she was being penetrated by his penis, period. The accused did not <laughs> If they hate this dick, you must acquit, said Depute, actually named Cockburn. <laughs> <laughs> Rod <laughs> Rodkins, laughing. you've been laughing about this all day, but all actually, day. when it comes to, to, to the work on the force, Cockburn's no joke. Detective, we now have two cases in two weeks of women being sexually accosted, sir. All right. Better just send this on down to Special Victims Unit. There's only one problem, sir. It's the assailant. He didn't have a c Oh my god. That means there's only one choice. We need to bring in the Cockburn. Sir, with all due respect, Cockburn's too close to this, sir. Cockburn's had enough. Damn it, I'll tell you when Cockburn's had enough. You may not like Cockburn. You may not like the methods. You may not even like the fact that Cockburn will push you to your limits just to find out what they are. But my God, there's no one better for this case than Cockburn. And the only reason you're still standing here is because you know it, you son of a bitch! Sir, I don't think it's a good idea, not since Oakland. I know about Oakland. Don't you think I know about that? But sir... Cockburn's wife was killed by a c***less man! Come over here, deputy. If you want to have a job in my precinct, you keep your f***ing mouth shut about Oakland or you'll be selling cigarettes out of a bodega on 8th and Wacker between being a hobo's play toy so fast it'll make your head spin. Do you hear me? I wouldn't call on Cockburn unless absolutely necessary. My God, when you're out there with c***less monsters roaming these streets with no end in sight and you need the best damn person for this hyper-specific niche milieu, you thank the sweet Lord Jesus that someone exists out there like Cockburn. Yes, Commissioner. Get Cockburn sobered up. We have no choice now. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, that was, uh, took a long time. Uh, all right. Gosh, you can't make these things we up. We have to get, well, no, we did. We did. We made it all up. <laughs> oh, that, that's not a real show. It's not a real film, in case you didn't know. <laughs> no. Can you imagine him going and buying said an inanimate objects at the adult stores? And it's like, give me well, something well, that you, won't raise any it, eyebrows the story's in the story's not clear. The story's not clear if he bought those objects. Well, what do you think it was? True. It, it, it could be a plastic sword. Well, no. <laughs> the, point is, the point is with this, honestly, usually if someone is sexually accosting someone, he is the person getting, <laughs> having, standing something to gain. No, I, I just, He's just like, ha ha ha, I'll pleasure all of them with none of my own. <laughs> yeah, because, uh, like, it's the perfect crime. <laughs> Can I convict this At person? At the pitch meeting in between, you know, needing oxygen, 
if you read the story, the guy had a very um, well thought out plan to hide the fact that he didn't have a penis. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what was this? I, I mean, like, I mean, the lights always, always had to be off. No one could look him in the eye. <laughs> <laughs> look him in the eye? I mean, don't look me in oh, the eye! Don't or my hands! Don't gaze upon them! You'll lose all your strength! <laughs> Uh, she's like, uh, here, how about this one? No, that's I just too big. Take, you know, know. It's a very, it is a very bizarre crime. <laughs> I'm going to invade the bank's safety deposit box and give them all my coins. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's got to be the dumbest thing that I've ever You'll never catch me now, Cockburn. <laughs> Cock, Ooh, Cockburn your, always gets her man. You and your partner of Vag Hutch will never get this. <laughs> it is a real story. You'll, uh, you'll never see two gay but, guys trying to pull this off. I mean, you really, I don't think it would work the same. Yeah, I, I don't I, know. I don't about, think it was. Which, by the way, I found out recently, we talked about this. I guess Patrick Stewart is not gay. What? A lot of people thought he was no. gay with Ian. E Garrett thought he was gay. He was like, he still is not convinced. But him and Ian McKellen. <laughs> yeah. It, which is funny because Ian McKellen seems way less gay. Yeah. But you know, you know Stewart. what? You know what? If they, <laughs> very like, confusing. If they were to, if they actually were to ever, for example, you know what it would take for them to become a, an actual gay couple? Just Patrick Stewart saying yes. Yeah, then, then, <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Well, in front of There's every no, magazine, they're Hollywood's yeah. hottest right. couple. People get mad. It's like, well, what are you saying? Yeah, I'm saying that men are just so animalistic in their sexual urges, <laughs> and you remove one part of that equation, which is a cur yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That's it. It's just yeah, gay people. It's just a party of yes, yeah. <laughs> as, as opposed to lesbian couples where it's a party of I have a headache. Yes. Exactly. Well, and that, that goes exactly. A lot of against. aspirin. They go through it. They get the Costco bottle. <laughs> Come on, be sensitive. <laughs> so, I think that goes against like for for some reason in guys' heads we think of guys and guys and we're like, oh, that's. It's incredibly gross, right? Yes. And then, for some reason, the general public, not me, when you think about two girls, you're like, ah, it seems plausible. It's too hot chicks. I don't think and, so. And, I don't and think that's so. actually the opposite of what happens. It doesn't, you know, that's one thing, obviously, to me, is oh, it's just never... I'm not into it. But it's I'm simple mathematics. They people like, they're like, four boobs. Four boobs are better than two. That's well, what always, it is. Always better than, always better than two. <laughs> it's, yeah, four boobs. I, ta I take three boobs with an explanation. <laughs> That's all it is. You're way more forgiving You're than I am. You're analyzing it. Just men like seeing breasts. Get your ass to Moz. Sorry, Madison. We have a girl who works with us now in the Sorry, office. And, yeah. you know, but I'm pretty sure we didn't let the cat out of the bag. <laughs> Lawsuit. <laughs> um, uh. All right. So we're going to move on to this. This comes to us from The Rebel. I highly recommend that you go watch the entire clip. Before that, by the way, hit our notification bell because subscriptions don't mean anything anymore. And uh, join Mug Club. You get this full hour show every single day, loudofclutter.com slash mug club. And uh, live streams, if you don't, you can live stream every Thursday here on uh, YouTube at mm -hmm. 8 p.m. Eastern. Anyway, nice. so uh, this comes from The Rebel. Please go watch the whole video for con uh, context. I just thought it was very good. It, it was perfect to crystallize the techniques, the tactics that yeah. the left use right now when it comes to debating. And there, mainly there are five, and you've heard us talk about them, but we wanted to take a video and give you a play-by-play -play just in case there were any doubt. So uh, let's go to the first clip where right away this person, by the way, this is after the, Tor to set the context, after the Toronto shooting. Yeah. Not a lot of news about this for people who don't know. It was a big shooting. I think 16 people were shot finally. Oh, wow. Um, how, do we know how many people died? Did it I'm ever not change? sure what. Last I heard two. Last I heard two. Okay, that's why I heard two. Because you never know. Obviously, some it, it, tragedies happen. But right. after that, uh, one reporter for the Rebel went and spoke about, obviously, the, the, the Muslim ties. So right away, this lady freaks out and goes to progressive tactic. Number one, before the clip, the number one technique they use is, of course, accuse racism. She And she, yeah. just go to clip. Excuse this is a moment for like our community. Can you please not descend into racist things right now? Please what, don't. What, I'm sorry, what did I say that was racist? Sorry, this is not what Canada is about. Canada is not about racism. The rebel is a racist source of news. <laughs> okay. I, I uh, love the fact. The I love the country. fact that she started with like still on the phone with her friend. Yes. Like I, I, have, I have to call you back. I yeah. gotta go on the phone with her friend while she has kids there with objects yes. that could be easily swallowed. <laughs> like I'm sorry. I actually I'm actually I'm doing Sudoku while my child plays with a plastic bag over his head. I have things to do. So in I record time too. By the way, the racism. And yeah. then we know this. I don't really even need to go over this a whole bunch. It's a tool that's used to actually bring you into their their number two technique, which we'll get to in a second. But first, here's what what's important. Why did she accuse this reporter again? Go watch the whole video uh, at the rebel it's up here on on youtube or i think rebel.media why'd she accuse him of being racist here's exactly why did i say anything that was racist yes, or you uh, asked if the man uh, well i'm actually you asked if the shooter had visited isis websites that is not no, okay. i said cbs in the u.s this is not okay i said cbs no, in the u.s is reporting that okay 
All right, and the truth is, the day that this video was being filmed, CBS was reporting that the shooter was, by the way, the Muslim shooter, yeah. had expressed interest in ISIS. Yes. By the way, ISIS even took credit for it. So it doesn't sound like <laughs> they were too far these... off base. No. <laughs> At least potentially, right? Though, you never know. You can't always go by what ISIS takes credit for. No, 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 that's definitely true. If anyone kills anybody, ISIS is like, yeah, he was yeah. one of our draft picks. <laughs> well, look, one, <laughs> it's a tall count over yeah. two. We, yeah. We had an option contract. <laughs> no, what really pisses me off about this is if you watch it from the beginning he's very like politely asking yes. his questions he asked a, a separate question about motive and then said hey here's what's being reported what do you think and this lady who is absolutely not a part of the conversation leans in still on the cell phone oh they're talking about some racist stuff hold on i gotta chime in because people think <laughs> my opinion's valued yeah exactly so she's yeah. she's a horrible human being um and uh, this brings us to the method number two i was talking about the next thing that she does and we see this from the progressive left just tell you how you have no right to speak they just try to deny your right to speak completely <laughs> We see her do that multiple times throughout the video. Don't come here. The rebel, really? You didn't, You don't need to be here right now. And this, you are not in my community. You can leave now. You so-called media. Well, I need, to, you not need to not be here. Based on based on whose authority? Get okay. the hell out of here. You have no business being here with your racist crap. Okay. Get your racist crap out of my community. Get it out now. Was that the Somali pirate from Captain Phillips <laughs> playing Batman? He's looking good. He put on a few pounds. I, looking for a 15 minute game there. I'm not be. the hero this Toronto needs, <laughs> <laughs> but the one it deserves. Your Toronto belongs to me. <laughs> Rob, Rob, Rob Ford is gone. <laughs> I am the captain now. Where I, I am the Dark Knight now. Where's his crack? Uh, <laughs> by the way, this is just not necessarily a point, but just for complete bonus stupidity and insanity, this is the kind of uh, argument that only the insane uh, rant about. The rebel is a racist source of news. Because we're asking people their opinion of a mass shooting. Why? And the mass? What does the mass shooting have to do with a man that? Like, come on, come on, man. What does it have to do with a man who you didn't finish that sentence? Why should I need to? <laughs> <laughs> because Why you started to? that sentence. Because the sentence makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. You put words together to make a phrase that confuses people who are not retarded. It's like. Flip microwave toaster bagel. Wait, what Wait, did you what? mean by that? Why should I have to explain it? I shouldn't it? have to tell you. Because I want to know if I need to call the EMTs if you have a stroke. <laughs> Racist. On air. <laughs> Foam. What? <laughs> the, uh, 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 dumpster uh, fire. Trump. <laughs> <laughs> so this uh, brings us... Uh, oh, for, like, it's, it's a perfect example. Of the, it's just the left, they don't want to deal in reality. And I don't know if she even believes what she's saying. Or if she's just that stupid. Or if she's so dogmatic that she doesn't realize she's that stupid. It's like the stupid liberal chicken and egg. Mm -hmm. But, you know, is it the chicken? Is it the egg? But she's just following chicken liberal, Toronto mayor, who instead, by the way, used this exact same tragedy to immediately pivot to gun control. You've heard me ask the question of why anybody would need to buy 10 or 20 guns, which they can lawfully do under the present laws. And that leads to another question we need to discuss. Why does anyone in this city need to have a gun at all? How about to avoid And I know even habit? answering that question won't fully eliminate tragedies like this, but even if we can prevent one of these incidents, then in my view, it is a, a discussion worth having. That's first no, off. That's I, no. I love. Now it's the number of guns. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Like no, it used to be capat the amount of bullets in the gun. Yeah. The amount of rounds in the magazine. I know. Watch. It's the almost like they realized that didn't help. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. But now it's like, well, hold on. Why would anyone need four single shot shotguns? <laughs> well, may maybe just because because you wouldn't let the them have the one that had four shots. <laughs> You're just you're just shifting numbers around. Yeah, now they have to walk around like a riot. I mean, the, I mean, the fact that there's a guy who may or may not be ISIS because we don't know. Right. Right. Uh, you need four guns in case the first three miss. <laughs> yes, exactly. And then one to 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 pistol butt him for good measure. <laughs> As one well, he's out. Now, this is the kind of derangement, and I do mean derangement that leads to tweets uh, like this from Toronto novelist and I think Vice writer who wanted to put oh, a yeah. ban, quote, on white men, just because he's looking for a reason to be crazy. And the, this was before they found out he was a Muslim, <laughs> right? Yes. It was, yeah. let's put a ban yeah. on white men. Until we figure this out. Because it's Canada, so they assume it's a white male. But that, that, To be fair. That's a roll of the dice. Yes. And, uh, okay. You don't necessarily need a lucky, <laughs> right. lucky blow on that. You're probably rolling up snake eyes, but yeah. Because historically, that's what white men tend to do. We tend to join ISIS and go blow things up in the name of Allah, right? Yes. That <laughs> makes perfect sense to me. Real quick, I want to go back to one thing that he said. He's like, if we can even prevent one. Yeah, exactly. 
if we can prevent one of these, it's a conversation. No, it's not. No, that's the stupidest thing. Freedom that's is really messy. lazy. When argument. did you think freedom was going to? And yeah, I know you don't quite have the same kind of freedom, obviously, not even close in Canada, but for here, it's messy. I'm right. sorry. If we Me could even prevent one death by banning every single private pool, <laughs> would you not do it? Especially Why don't you care about dead If we babies? can prevent one forest fire. <laughs> If we could prevent one robber from dying in your kiddie pool in the front I mean, yard. Just, <laughs> if we could prevent one transgender suicide, not the 41% attempts, just the 1% by telling them that they're actually a man. <laughs> My God. My God. Why wouldn't you do it? Where's Cockburn? Anyway, this is where you need him. Bring in Cockburn. <laughs> Give it was Cockburn when you need it. He is effective, but my, he is tardy. Uh, which brings us to the technique they use in the next point. Using the mob mentality. We've talked about this. The left uses this quite a bit. The power of the audience um, to try and intimidate you again into silence. If they haven't just denied your right to speak, you can't speak. You know what? Now we're going to bring in other people who hopefully intimidate you into not speaking. So right here, it's bring in the reinforcements. Community. Yeah. U.S. doesn't know anything about this community. So this, this, this is damn for this is our here. city. Okay. This is our city. You need to we, not be here's here. the thing. Well, what, I need to not be here. Based on based on whose authority? Based on my authority, because I live here. Do you? <laughs> I, okay. It's it's like she hadn't even thought about the answer. <laughs> based on my authority. Because, what? What? I mean, can you get deputized in Toronto just by living there? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Look, I love this guy in the background. Like he's like, this is my moment, and he walks up and he's fumbling through his words, yeah. and he goes back to her, and he's like. Crap! You gotta love the I mean, no, just, come back. He's grabbing the mic. Damn it, black man, you found us. <laughs> I'm black in Canada. The talk to me. Essential, and when we, people talk about it, enlisting the white knight. In this case, black knight. It's just crazy. It's just coming right in. And his baby's like, listen. And this is so funny to me too. This is our story. This is not America's story. Oh, really? So there was nothing about Demi Lovato and Canadian news. All of your stories are American stories. Yeah, never yeah. talk about Occasionally, Trump. Occasionally, you do something so screwed up that you make international news. It doesn't mean that we don't get to cover it, <laughs> dummy. It's like it's like Captain Phillips pirate didn't think it through. All right. By the way, here's just some crazy bonus footage again because we figured we had to include it. You prefer a communist society? I prefer a socialist society. Yes, I do. Like in Venezuela, perhaps? No. no North no. Korea? It, oh my God! Really? Cuba? Wow! Wow! No, I'm, I'm naming all the I'm naming all the socialists. You're descending into your own hell right now. Listen. Well, these are hell holes. I agree with you. Oh, hell holes! Now you're quoting Trump. Lovely. Ah, that was perfect. Uh -oh. Perfect. I Actually, he did a different kind of hole. Quoting yeah, quoting hole. Trump is the yeah. best thing you could have ever done for yourself. Way to go. Was that was priceless. Way to go. Now I'm done, done here. If you say so. <laughs> what? You have to be like, done. You quoted Trump, therefore you're done here because I said that Trump was racist and you are and now you're a racist quoting another racist. It's like incept a racist. <laughs> <laughs> Which brings us to their top number four technique. We all know this playing victim. So we say, okay, you're a racist. You have no right to speak. Let's bring in the mob to intimidate you. And at this point, if you're still speaking, what they do, even if they have the mob, is they play the victim. They act as though you are attacking them because if they are a victim, they therefore have the moral high ground. You see, you're it, this plays out to the, to, to the letter. I'm just asking questions, well, but you're yelling at me. You're a question, nor is it appropriate. Are you really a school teacher? Pete, yes, I am. Is this how you teach your children, Absolutely. by the way? Absolutely. You scream Absolutely. at them? No. <laughs> Come on, man. Seriously? 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 Are you that dense, dude? Well, I've never seriously? seen you teach, man. Seriously? <laughs> Are you seriously that dense? Well, I mean, you said you were a teacher, and I'm I just wondering. Okay. Don't question my profession. Okay. <laughs> With the Toronto District School Board? Does that matter? I'm just wondering I where you. I identify myself to you. I don't have to. I don't have to justify. I don't have to justify my yelling, cussing, racist accusations at you, sir. <laughs> it's my. It's my First Amendment right, which I don't believe in and doesn't exist in our country's constitution. <laughs> she actually goes on and talk about her rights. She goes, no, she says, I know my amendment rights. You don't have them. You don't have them. You're Canada. Goes, Did you forget? And that's also rights? not what we call them here. Yeah. So I know my too much First American Amendment news. Yes. They're confusing your rights again. <laughs> right here, if you were to say, I know my amendment rights to a police, just on a routine stop, they'd say, all right, let's put you in the yeah. breathalyzer. Yeah. I know my First Amendment rights. I know my Second Amendment rights. And she just goes, I know my amendment rights. You don't. You don't have them. Because it's a crappy country. Uh, which is, and this brings us to number their, their favorite tech, not their favorite, but one of them, it's the uh, appeal to authority fallacy. This is what they do a lot, the left. So to recap, they go racism, deny your right to speak, mob mentality, then play the victim. And then if that doesn't work, they just really want you to shut up. They either present someone else who knows more like, there's consensus from scientists who cannot be here right now. Like or they Michelle say, Wolf. <laughs> yes, yes. Or they say, yeah, or, 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 or look at this degree, therefore, uh, I'm a, so what's the name of the socialist? I just forgot her name. Uh, something, something Cortez. Something 
doing something Cortez. Oh, yeah. She's like, I have a degree in economics, so I know economics. It's like, well, why don't you answer the question, economics? I have a degree! <laughs> it's magic. And she does it right here. Not, not know anything about social reform? Do you not know anything about representative governments? I have two degrees in political science, man. Don't even try to challenge me. Well, yeah. please educate me. Don't even try. That's like a female equivalent of, come at me, bro. <laughs> come at me. Let's I mean, go. Here's my question though at this point. What happened to her son? Like, did he just start walking home? <laughs> <laughs> He's at a tattoo parlor somewhere. If you watch the whole clip, the yeah. kid is clearly embarrassed. He's like, a, oh, yeah, can we really get out of here? Mom, I gotta do this again. I just want my damn ice cream, Mom. <laughs> Mom, can you just get, get... That was hilarious to me when the kid's like, oh, Mom, can we leave? And she's like, we're, no, we're staying here. We're supporting this and we're getting ice cream. Right. Just want my Whether ice you like cream it or the, not. With the side of pretend rights. <laughs> yes, side of, side of amendment rights that like, don't oh, exist yeah. in my country. Now, here, here with all of this is what's even more scary. Um, this is kind of, the, you know, these are the, the lamentations of the ragefully insane. It wouldn't be such a big deal if it was just this crazy, tiny minority of people relegated to insane asylums being dipped in electrical shock water like Shutter Island. If that were it, you'd be like, okay, there are a few people out there. Instead, and this is what we've been talking, that's why I want to know what you think the percentage is of radical left-wingers, what they make up of today's progressive wing versus the moderates, because this person is, you guessed it, teaching your children. What do you do for a living right now, man? I'm a high school teacher. Okay, yeah. Oh, okay, you got Educating a nice crowd. Educating young about people like you and about your agendas the and about the racist crap that you guys propagate in my city after a tragedy. Look at that, there it is. It's, oh. it's her face going, yeah, yeah, I teach. That's, right. That's the face of, yeah, I get your kids for seven hours a day and I get to force feed them my bullcrap saying that you're racist and that capitalism is wrong and that so, and guess what? There's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, yeah. That's cockiness about her propaganda and indoctrination and really child yeah. abuse at that point. And this is something that Americans really need to understand. Why is she so emboldened to say this? Why can she uh, swear, cuss, make personal attacks, and then threaten to call the cops, call the cops on the reporter, by the way, with no fear of ramifications on her part? Here's why. You're gonna call the police? People about stuff that's completely inaccurate and irrelevant. This is You're illegal in, under stuff. Canadian law? Uh, you know what, unfortunately not, but if you start spewing sp racist crap that is hate speech, yes it is illegal. Ah, there and go. there it is. There's yeah. the rub. When people say, wow, well, hold on, when I did the change my, we did the change my mind, hate speech isn't real, people mm -hmm. say, well, you yeah. shouldn't say mean things, but that's a, that's right. This man wasn't saying mean things. He has questions. He's saying, hey, the, uh, CBS is reporting that uh, ISIS is, uh, hate speech. I'm going to call the cops. <laughs> there it is. That's what I and Jordan Peterson and my, people like Mike Ward uh, have been fighting against for a long time. The people who write, use, respect, and manipulate hate speech laws are the person you see right there. Okay, this is what's important. Oh, she's just crazy. This is when people say, the radical left, and uh, okay, she's just crazy. She's just the radical left. She's just this fringe. How far is she off from Melissa Click? Remember the college professor? Mm, I need yeah. some muscle here. She was so comfortable doing that. Or or the entire human, tri the tribunals with Mattress Girl and UVA yeah, and the rape yep. scandals where men never had yeah. any recourse. The entire, no one at the college has said anything. Think about that for a second. She's a high school teacher. How far off do you think she is from most high school teachers, from most college professors. Let me ask you this, how far off do you think she is from Nancy Pelosi? How far off do you think her ideology is from Hillary Clinton? Picture this woman in office. You know why? Because we already have them. And they want to be in control, as you hear, of what you can say. The only reason the United States is, is what, what we are and, and, and they are not is because of the First Amendment, which is what they want to do away with. In Canada, they don't have it at all. And she even vocalizes. She's basically saying, I'm emboldened, I'm emboldened to say, because I say it's hate speech and it's illegal. She, she just uses that as carte blanche mm -hmm. to accuse the man yeah. for saying, what about this man who may have had some involvement in ISIS? She thinks that she can verbally berate, harass somebody, and she'll get away with it. You know why? Because she can call the cops and have this guy arrested for asking a question. And you know what? In Canada, and in the kind of United States that Hillary Clinton, Nancy Pelosi, the Young Turks, everyone would have if given their choice, that man could be arrested. That should send shivers down your spine. Call in Cockburn. You need Cockburn to fix us. We have Dinesh D'Souza after this break. And now for Hopper Proverbs, sponsored exclusively by Mug Club. It is said a squirrel does not run because it has somewhere to be. A squirrel run because he's a, he's a dick. Just like Confucius. They're, they're both... They're both dicks. Join my club. Stay tuned for more Hopper Proverbs. Sponsored by Mug Club.
this is, but I realized what I kind of think this is. I've been watching River Monsters, mm. and when he's strapped in and doing the, the fishing, this he does it kind of like he goes at an angle. I've never really oh. fished very much, but I just used to think I you thought... catch it and you reel it in. Apparently, you have to give it some line. It's, it's a whole, that's why people are into it. I thought it. you were just pre-scrubbing your dishes before you put them in the dishwasher to have it do the rest that of the job. That would make sense. That's what yeah. I thought that was. And, that was. and you know what else? It also makes it's you a leading. tremendous fighter. It does. You will win the Valley Karate Tournament if you wash enough dishes. All right, our next guest, huge, uh, huge, huge name, obviously, in the conservative movement and mm-hmm. film side. He's had some movies, some of the biggest uh, documentaries of all time. We've had him on the show before. You can follow him on the Twitter, at Dinesh D'Souza. That kind of spells, you know who it is. His uh, latest, The Death of a Nation, premieres August 3rd. Mr. D'Souza, how are you, sir? Great to be on the show. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to have you on the show. Now, you're looking, you're looking tan, which, I, you know, I know is a weird thing because you're, you're uh, a minority, but you're looking more tan than last time we saw. You've been getting some sun? I think it's because I, I did a family trip to Hawaii, and um, I, you know, every now and then I have to reinforce the natural tan, and so, uh, plus, this also preserves my ethnic credibility. Yes, exactly. I remember I... I sometimes preface my statements with as a person of color. Yes. Exactly. I'm going to really work if I'm not a person of color. You know, well, you're really a person of a shade more so. But it's funny because that's we were just talking about that. I think yesterday, the NAACP, you couldn't say color people. It became racist for so long, but they, they, they just never admitted it. And now they're kind of right back into it. They just reversed it to people of color. But that includes everyone, yourself included. So it's not very accurate. This is true. Um, well, you know, um, I think what it is is that the Democratic Party these days, the Democratic Party used to be the party of the working class, right. and the Republican Party was the party of the business class. But now the Democratic Party is reorganized, and it's essentially, I believe, it's the party of the ethnic plantation. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, of course, originally, uh, Stephen, the party of the slave plantation, but today that plantation has gone multiracial. Yeah. And so yeah. they've got not just the black ghettos, they've got the Latino barrios, they've got the Native American reservations. So they don't like to campaign for votes individually. They just want to collect each ethnic group, deposit you on a plantation, create a kind of intergenerational dependency in which you trade your vote in exchange for a kind of meager provision, and then you're permanently enthralled to the Democratic Party. Yeah, well, it's, it's kind of a good racket if you if you can make it work. It is a good racket, especially if you have the buses and you give them free sandwiches and you take them to a voting booth where the option is Democrat or Democrat and heroin. You know, you put just put that on the ticket and they can I pick. Mean, the, the, the genius, the genius of this plantation system is that it gets people to vote Democratic regardless of who is on the ticket. Right. This is true. Let me ask you this. Uh, have you do you have you ever referred to yourself or does anyone ever refer to you as Asian American being Indian? Because I always wonder about that. Well, of course, all these categories are kind of bogus. I mean, when you think, yeah. for example, I mean, my wife's Venezuelan, right? So she falls into the Latino camp, but that camp includes Cubans, it includes uh, Mexicans. Uh, similarly, the Asian category is very wide. I mean, obviously, Indians and Chinese don't have a whole lot in common uh, ethnically or even historically. Right. But we got thrown into the same barrel. <laughs> and um, uh, to me, the puzzle about it isn't the ethnic label. It's it's why Asian Americans aren't voting in ratios of 80 to 90 percent for the Republican Party. Um, as a group, Asian Americans are uh, they're meritocratic, they're entrepreneurial. Um, they are socially to the right of Pat Robertson, uh, and yet, for reasons unknown, uh, they are still in the Democratic camp. Um, I don't know how Asians are thought to be smart, but this is one area well, in which that... hold on, so let's be careful. They're still very smart. They're just misled on that. Uh, but I always wonder, because people... Oriental, we've always said this is a much more accurate term, mm-hmm. because a lot of people, they would not say, oh, yeah, Dinesh D'Souza, don't... If I were describing you to someone who didn't know you, yeah, he's this, he's this guy who's written a lot of books, and he's that Asian-American guy. That's yeah, not... Only white feminists are even offended yeah. by it at all. They use it all the time. You go yeah. to Indian Chinatown, Oriental, Oriental's oh, yeah, yeah. on every building. If you said Asian-American, they'd go, yeah. behind the Indian gentleman? Um, so, Dinesh, tell us about your latest film now. You You've you've done uh, quite a few that have been really big, and this one is Death of a Nation. We have some footage rolling here. What's it about? What can people expect? Well, the the, the poster is a little bit uh, provocative. We morph the heads of of Trump and Lincoln. And, of course, the the Never Trump 
Trumpers who think it's uh, that Trump is a is a steep falling off from Reagan, I think are going to have uh, a constipation attack here because uh, you know how dare you compare Trump to Lincoln? But interestingly, the situations of the two guys are not that dissimilar. I mean, let's think about it. All this political craziness we've been seeing since the election is about a major political party, the Democrats, yeah. refusing yeah. to accept the result of a lawful election. An outside guy comes in. Uh, challenges for the Republican ticket, knocks out the favorites, and then beats the Democrats. Well, that happened in 1860. Uh, and so in 1860, the Democrats also went nuts. Then they broke up the country. This time, they're merely trying to stage a kind of coup. So the movie, uh, it's a deep dive into two big issues, fascism and racism or white supremacy. Mm -hmm. And as you know, these are the two incendiary tales that the left is trying to hang on the Republican elephant. And right, so right. the movie uh, questions this, challenges it, takes you to Europe, takes you into Mussolini, uh, dives into the not just the history of the Democratic Party, but where is the racism now? Yeah, uh, it's it's eye opening and it's it's going to blow people away. Um, so I'm very excited. Well, to be I haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen this yet, but we've talked about Mussolini on the show quite a bit. Uh, in your movie, is he a rather pathetic character? Because he, uh, whenever I think of Mussolini, uh, you know, Hitler, terrible person, obviously. Stalin, terrible person. Mussolini, it's, it's, also a terrible sad person. Sad Hitler. Is it? Yeah, but, he's, but, but it, it also makes me very sad because he was kind of pathetic. Well, he was a very strange guy. I mean, if you look at video of Mussolini uh, online, uh, it almost seems cartoonish. He, you know, the, the yes. caricature of the Italians uh, kind of from the mafia movies. Well, Mussolini is that in italics. And it's <laughs> almost- He always reminds me of Goldfinger. Yes, Goldfinger. Yeah, guy who's, you know, he's exaggerated mannerisms and so on. Now, interestingly, in his own time, Mussolini was seen as a serious guy. Uh, he was very- very well read in sort of Marxist literature and history. Uh, he wrote extensive, I mean, scholarly or at least semi scholarly articles. In that sense, he compares very favorably with Hitler. And of course, he was a man of the left. Right. Uh, he was an acquaintance of Lenin. Uh, Lenin sent him a telegram congratulating him when he started the, the, the fascist party yeah. in Italy. And uh, so the fact that Hitler and Mussolini came from the left. Well, he was, he was well read, but what I mean by this is he was, seemed kind of like a useful idiot to everyone else who was in real power. And that's the thing. Mussolini wasn't very good at it, in good at being evil in comparison. You know what I mean? I'm not saying all of them are evil. Let's be really, really clear, everybody. Okay, before, hold your comments. But Mussolini kind of sucked at being evil. Well, uh, th that may be true. I mean, he certainly <laughs> didn't have the kind of scary, you know, he didn't have the power that Hitler did, and, and he right. recognized that. But let's remember, Mussolini came to power in 1922, mm -hmm. uh, and he wasn't ousted till 1943. That's true. Uh, so he, he had a much longer tenure uh, yeah. than Hitler did. Um, Hitler basically lasted a little over a decade. Uh, Mussolini lasted uh, almost a quarter century. Hitler, that one-hit wonder. That one-hit wonder. That Walther PP put an end to it. Otherwise, he would have been like Abba, just churning out hits. Um, no, that is true. And, you know, a good point to contrast. That doesn't mean that popular is right. You know, Winston Churchill was ousted immediately after wartime because people wanted socialized health care. That was a big thing that people don't remember about Winston Churchill. Um, so that, that is, he was there for a long time. But, yeah, I mean, he just makes me sad because he's such a wiener. That's how I feel about Mussolini. Sorry for the direction with this. Um, let me ask you, what kind of pushback have you gotten from the left with this film, considering not only the cover, but the theme, you know, going in with uh, with Lincoln and, and President Trump and the Republican Party and the racist Democrats? Well, we've held back both on the film and on the book. The book comes out uh, July 31st. The film is out August 3rd. Uh, no one's seen it. And uh, it is funny that some people are attacking it without having seen it. But uh, and in the past, we've done a lot of screenings and things. So people were able to see the movie before it came out. But we're opening in one big bang in a thousand theaters next week. Uh, and uh, I expect that things will uh, will get kind of lively at that point. Yeah. Now, of course, there's a professional cadre of critics um, who tend to go see the movie. And then no matter what it says, uh, they start bashing it. Yeah. Uh, and this is because they're on the left. And, and ironically, the better the movie is, the more effectively it makes the case uh, the lower these guys tend to rank it because uh, they realize that this is going to cause them right. ideological pain. Uh, so we pay no attention to the critics. What we pay attention to is the audience. 
and I predict the audience is going to love the film. I do think they're going to love the film. A good example of that actually was, uh, did you ever watch the, the miniseries The Kennedys with Greg Kinnear? I love that. It was very, very, very well, put it this way, yeah. it is undeniably well done. Because a lot of conservative stuff, a lot of Christian films out there, eh, not all that great. We all know that. The, the Kennedys was really, really, really good. good. And it was actually very accurate. And that's why that's they didn't why they like it. it. And yep. it got panned by a lot of critics. Final question. We do have to get going, uh, Mr. D'Souza. Full pardon from the United States president here uh, uh, with uh, the obvious, basically undoing the misdeeds of this previous administration. What does that feel like? And can you now buy a gun? Uh, yes, I can. Uh, I can also vote again. Uh, and uh, so I've got my rights back. I, you know, I feel like I got my American dream back. Uh, and of course, the left was just rejoicing in the fact that they could hang the felon label on me. So I'm now one of a very small population, Stephen, of ex-felons. You see, normally if you're a felon, you're a felon for life. Right. Uh, there's a small population of us uh, pardoned guys. Right. You know, the funny, uh, anyway, I was on CNN and they were like, you know, uh, Dinesh, um, you really are the beneficiary of preferential treatment, very powerful people like Senator Cruz and the president uh, got you off. And I'm like, well, you know what? Some very powerful people named Obama and Holder and Pete Barrara got me into this in the first place. So it took a few powerful people to get me off. <laughs> they were too busy getting Chelsea Manning a wiener. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Or removing it. Which way did he go? Yeah, I don't. I don't know exactly. Something with the Manning and it involves a wiener. But that is, I am. I'm glad to hear it. And I would. You're like you're like the Count of Monte Cristo. Most people go in and they're in prison and their reputation is tarnished for life. But you were just putting lines on the wall, scratching it through. You made your way out. And as Edmund Dantes, you put the other guy in the back of the caravan and sent him to prison. Then that's just the leftist critics in the media. You know, they're just going to seethe over this forever, Dinesh. Enjoy that. Well, I'll, I'll feel that the Count of Monte Cristo script is fully played out when Obama or Hillary occupy my now vacated bunk in the <laughs> confinement center. There you go. waiting for him. Yes, there you go. Preferably with a very angry inmate. I, I, I don't, I shouldn't say it. We don't mean that a little bit. All right, the film is, of course, Death of a Nation. It premieres August 3rd. There's a book to go along with it. You can follow him at Dinesh D'Souza. Uh, Dinesh D. Su D. Souza, just so because sometimes we're like, I can't find him, and they're doing D. I. D. Souza, because mm -hmm. Nick DiPaolo confuses people. Mr. D'Souza, thank you so much. We wish you best of luck with the film. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Enjoy your freedom. Nicole Arbor after this. There it is again, so strong. Hey there, handsome. No, not, not you. Oh, Lord, no. I'm talking about that snazzy t-shirt. Looks like someone's been dropping some coin at louderwithcrowdershop.com. Now, come near. Let the world see. Don't be shy. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, now, someone's trying to be a sneaky fellow. Let's go. Wear that bad boy loud and proud. Nothing to be ashamed of here. Say, what's the big idea? Stop kidding around and show everybody your swag. Don't make me come down there. Well, now your t-shirt just says socialism, which is far more embarrassing. There we go. See, nothing to be afraid of. Available exclusively at louderwithcrowdershop.com, mug clubbers are almost never beaten up for wearing a long sleeve socialism is for fags t-shirt. Unless, of course, you're sickly looking and lacking self-confidence. And that's why we now sell long sleeve versions, perfect for those cool summer nights and covering up a lifetime of gym avoidance and poor decisions. Get yours now at louderwithcrowdershop.com. That's louderwithcrowdershop.com. Because anywhere else would be pure faggotry. Hey there, one live read of the week. Uh, not only can you support, of course, the show if you need to purchase a Fire and by Walther because it's a wonderful sponsor of the show, but the show only continues uh, to exist because of Mug Club. Ladderwithcrowder.com slash Mug Club. We do the show full hour every day. And uh, listen, we're not paying the bills with YouTube. We've talked about this. And just so you know as well, there are about a dozen people employed here uh, with Ladder with Crowder. A lot of people like you're seeing for the first time, Brodigan, have been with for five years and they rely on Mug Club uh, and they help contribute to the show. So a lot of people who aren't necessarily on-air personalities, they don't always necessarily get the credit that they deserve. And uh, if you don't like it, you do not have to join. You can do a free trial, $99 annually. Get this hand-etched mug as well as a uh, Lotto with Crowder every single day and all of the other wonderful CRTV programming. LottoWithCrowder.com slash mug. Oh, and if you're a student, veteran, active military, it's $69. Okay, do that. Maybe buy a Walther if you need a gun. Back to the show. And now listen to this. I've never seen 
seen a gor- I've still never seen a gorilla do this. I've been waiting for someone to send me. Going to all the wrong. I've seen one itch, and I've seen one head, mm. but I've never seen this. That's the premium package shit. Which is odd because the barrel full of monk. All of the monkeys are doing this. It's predicated on the idea that all monkeys do this. It's a lie. I don't think it's lie honest. And it's uh, okay. Our next guest. She is a returning guest. The first time she came on, it was kind of a wild card. We had no idea. Yeah. I, I I think she would say most of the feedback was very positive. We really liked having her on. You can follow her on the Twitter at Nicole Arbor. Of course, you can also uh, check out her YouTube channel where uh, she receives hate regularly as well as praise. Comedian extraordinary Nicole Arbor. How are you? Hi. How are you? I'm fantastic. Good. Well, I'm, gl- I'm glad to have you on the show. Um, you guys were really nice, and I'm so glad that you haven't been firebombed. I've been so worried about you guys. Thank you very much. Well, that was w- what inspired me to bring you back. You sent an email after we did the uh, the phone call with the reporter at Austin Chronicle. Um, it seemed like that was yeah. impactful for you for some reason. Oh, my gosh. Well, just I've had so much fake news written about me, and I'm just on, like, the fake news war path right now. Yes. And then watching you go in on her made me so happy because I've also done something similar with a, a reporter last year after I did, I hosted this like lingerie fashion show and a man who probably has never had sex in his life decided that that was very offensive, called the girls strippers, all sorts of stuff. And I called him on it live on my Facebook. He Hold on a second. I I, there's a litany of things just, just kind of thrown out there. <laughs> First off, he found yeah. a lingerie fashion show offensive, and so his insult was stripper? So he <laughs> came to, it was raising funds for like a children's charity kind of thing. It's like this guy's night out, classy, the girls were in lingerie, but whatever. They did their best. It was small town in Canada. But this reporter, you're making it sound like these women have hooves. Like, uh, the, they, don't, they don't have hooves, but it wasn't the Victoria's Secret Show production. Sure. It was like... The girls were all gorgeous. Everybody did their best. Yes. It was all for charity. Okay. But this gentleman, I believe from CBC, comes in and writes this whole like expose about the girls being escorts and strippers and like the strip show. And it's like, that didn't happen. And then these poor girls were being like fired from their jobs for being escorts. So I jumped in, went on a phone call with the dude, but live streamed it on my Facebook and I got him. He, Very did, nice. he didn't mean to write a review. He, 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 that was his Google search. He thought yeah, he was, he thought he was search. typing into Google. He, he asked their numbers so that he could validate his sources. And then when they turned him down, he wrote an article. I can, by the way, I can fact check really this funny. zero, but I, it sounds like it's probably about right. So I'm going to trust. I'm going to trust. You can. You can totally fact check it. It's great. Yeah. I'll send you. I'll send you the link to my live stream. It was pretty fun. Well, I, I can appreciate that because when I I had a lot of even some like big like we've talked about this with the Young Turks. They actually used to go after me and address me when I had like forty thousand YouTube followers. And now they will roast every Tom Dick and here, every conservative not named Steven Crowder because once once you crash Chank Uyghur's panel as Chank Uyghur, it kind of like your name is the one that shall not be spoken in their halls. Um, <laughs> but that's something too. Back then there used to be fake news written. And I had no ability to really combat it. You know, if, if the Daily yeah. Beast wrote something or if Washington uh, Post wrote something, you kind of just had to take it on the chin and tell your followers, but they weren't numerous back then. And, and that's what we thought with the Austin Chronicle, even though I know they don't have a huge readership, it was just so inaccurate and so emblematic of all the big newspapers. That's why we did it. And she came to us. So it sounds like the same thing happened to you. It was so awesome. I loved it so much. Hey, for you guys. Thank you very Please, much. Please, more of that. More of that. <laughs> well, well we're, we're, we're looking. It's, it's just take. I, I think we're having Lee Doran. He was one of the early YouTube uh, political channels, How the World Works, and um, really kind of nerdy, super smart type. And he has like 100 fact checks from Washington, po- from Washington Post fact checks where they've labeled things accurate. And he has all the links and why they are completely wrong. And we'll do a full hour show on fact checking Washington Post fact checks. So, um, well, I, really I, fun. I'm glad that you reached out. Now I understand why it resonated with you and we will do more of that. Uh, okay, so you were, I, this happened this week, Trevor Noah on the apology tour for his Aboriginal joke. Have you read about this, heard about this? I haven't, no, tell me the story. Oh, okay. Well. Um, you know, it's Trevor Noah is Trevor Noah, and he doesn't realize that appeasing crocodiles is futile, and, 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 and now apparently he made a joke about aboriginal women. He's a stupid person. He's a stupid person. But isn't, isn't it really fun, though, when he has to jump in that now and go apologize? Yeah. I think it's fantastic. <laughs> well, he hasn't apolo- I, He refuses to apologize initially. I don't know the exact up to date right now at the second of this interview. But it was a joke where he said, you know, uh, for some of you who say you've never seen an attractive. A- it was actually a pretty funny joke. He said, I, you've ne- I think the joke was this, okay? And you can tell me if you find this uh, uh, offensive or not and if he needs to apologize as a woman, as a woman, as, as one with breasts, though men have breasts right. too. Uh, we should need to learn these things. Men can get pregnant too, I read yeah. at CNN. 
his joke was something along the lines of, uh, you say you've, you've never met an attractive uh, Aboriginal woman, and to you I say, yet. Something like that. Like you, and he said, you haven't met all of them, and made, I, I don't know, some kind of sex joke, and apparently this deeply wounded people. Now, I don't like Trevor Noah, but I think it's a pretty benign joke. I also think that most Aboriginal women are unattractive in my experience. Your thoughts? Um, I have met a ton of really hot Aboriginal women. They're Native Canadian, and Miss Canada last year is a freaking babe. Actually, I think she won Miss Universe. Well, no, something I think like he was that. talking about She's South African because you have to say First Nations. So, like, I would never, uh, I would never yeah. refer to them as Aboriginals. Wow, so we'll you're racist, that. and we'll have to scrub this. In I'm. <laughs> I've I've been told I'm a racist many times. It's fine. I'm not even that fast. But yeah, we'll, I think we'll that's change just that a to funny progressive post. Yes, we'll, we'll change it to progressive, yep. and yeah, you'll be good. Go ahead. I really appreciate it, guys. Thank you for helping with my hate. Um, yeah, I just think it's funny. Whatever. I just like that he has to apologize now or that he's offended people because he's he does it all the time. It's time for him to get into some shit. Well, because you also were telling me just off, off air that you were meeting with the, the French soccer team with the World Cup and you had a, you had a discussion about Trevor Noah. So I met the, okay, this is a fun, fun thing. So Trevor Noah was talking shit about the French soccer team saying that it's a win for Africa, not for France. And then saying that they're all actually from Africa. And the team was like, uh, no, two of us were fr born in Africa, but we're mostly from here. And France got really pissed off. Their ambassador, I think, or someone from the consulate wrote a letter to his show. They were pissed off about it. And Trevor's like, no, and he doubled down. I wrote a thing being like, Trevor's just mad because he's the whitest black guy ever. And he's just, whatever, he's projecting some shit. It was funny. Yeah. Don't I get an Instagram message from the French soccer team laughing at my post? I'm like, win for Nicole Arbor. <laughs> then I'm at the Maximal Hot 100 party like a couple of days ago. And some little man in a suit comes up to me and he looks magical. And I'm like, I should follow him because he said, follow me. Wait, and wait, I hold go, on. When you say little man or little... Like actual, like little. No, no, just a, like a tall human, like a not tall human, <laughs> not a midget. No, I'm they are it humans. Oh, no. ah. oh, this whole episode is gonna get me fired from life. <laughs> yes, life. exactly. Oh, Continue. Oh. I just, I just wanted to oh. clarify. I wasn't trying to snag you, but you, 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 is, we did. Oh, it's hard. I'm, I'm imagining this man. He's just a tiny gentleman. He's yes. not a little person per se. But he is a tiny man in okay. this like really nice suit. And he's like, follow me. Someone wants to meet you. I'm like, oh, my God, does he own a chocolate factory? This feels magical. So I follow him because that seems reasonable. And it was the French soccer team. And I have a video of them handing me the World Cup. And I'm like, what the heck? And they're like, we think it was funny. I'm like, <laughs> handing you the World Cup for crapping on Trevor Noah? Exactly. So I won this round. Yeah, this is my life. The old, I, I hate to correct you, but uh, Oompa Loompas don't own chocolate factories. They're indentured, they're indentured servitudes, uh, indentured servants to the chocolate factory. This, but the man who does own the chocolate factory wears very nice suits, and he can pretend that he walks weird, and then he does a front roll, and it's fantastic. Yes. It's a good show. Yeah. Well, actually, you know, this is, we, we had actually had uh, Little Person Jesus and Little Person Santa wrestle at our, our Christmas live stream for the Spirit of Christmas in Ooh, a pool of pudding. And uh, they were very uh, spirited. But I will tell you, say this, so I want to use, I, I, that's a good example. If they, want, if they say it hurts my feeling to say midget or whatever it is, I understand. But words kind of matter. And it's not really descriptive when you say a little person because we've said that for a long time, not meaning people who are now called little people. At one point it was dwarves. It could be a gymnast. Exactly, yeah. it could be a gymnast. Or David Dow being escorted from a United flight, rightfully so. It's really hard to tell, they're just little. So that's the problem, that, that's why this, this, you know, Lenny Bruce, I'm sure you've seen, you've seen the documentary, probably read about him as a comedian, but the, you know, don't take my words yeah, yeah. away. I, I'm amazed that the left is coming for words. And dictating this and do you think that this is last we spoke with you you were kind of middle of the road it seems like you're do you think you're leaning more uh more and more right now as you've been embraced here's oh i am being embraced and it feels nice thank you to the people with brains i appreciate you uh even if you just like me because my shirt is low cut i'll take it um <laughs> going in the but, thumbnail <laughs> go ahead hey i know why i'm here steven so basically I really love what I'm hearing on your side, but I think that I am the most useful staying a little bit more purple right now because mm. when you're yelling at people from either side, the other side doesn't listen to you. That's probably true. Uh, but, the, but kind of my point is the, 
they yell at you no matter what from the left, whether it's the fat shaming issue, which we talked about this week. What Now you see it with Trevor Noah. Um, I'm actually surprised that the French soccer team went out and grew, grew, grew a spine, A, because they're French, and B, because they're a soccer team. Uh, and we're willing to step in with you and making fun of Trevor Noah. The point is, I think everyone is so... Do you want to know? <laughs> I got to tell you how funny it was because I had to ask them the questions. So me asking these very ripped black men, so are you from Africa? They were just like... No, we're French, you stupid blonde idiot. It was wonderful. The conversation, the exchange, everything. Oh, it was a lot of fun. What do they say about blacks in Canada now? Because I remember I had a friend who was from Jamaica. Where do they stand? Yeah, no, I had a friend from Jamaica what? who would get really offended at African American. Her name was her name was Leanne, and she'd say, "I have." You I'm know, sure it still is. Yeah, well, I'm sure it's just, she. Yes, she was like, she's like, I'm not. Af I have not African. My grandmother's or my grandfather's grandfather, grandfather. You know, she went back many generations to Jamaica. She's like, I'm Canadian. Jamaica. Yeah. So yeah, this I had this rouse today with people on the interwebs um, because where where does it stop? It's like I had a conversation with someone. They're like, I'm African American. I'm like, oh, so you're from Africa? They're like, no, I'm from America. I'm like, but you've been to Africa? They're like, no. I'm like, so you're American? They're like, you're racist. I'm like, no. <laughs> this, is, yeah. this is a sketch from Monty Python. This isn't real life. Well, no, it is real because they're looking at you and then they're bringing up a page from Hitler Youth and they're going, thought, thought so, nailed it. So it doesn't matter what you say at that point. <laughs> <laughs> I survive everything. <laughs> <laughs> it, it really, it, well, okay, this was an example, too. We talked about earlier this week, and then we'd have to, to, to get going. Um, this this lady you saw who walked, obviously, the fat pride thing is no new thing to you. The lady who walked the streets of New York who was a size, like, 36, and then she got mad that people were good for her walking. Good for yes, her. Yes, exactly. Yeah, just creating <laughs> Look new. Look at that left, right, strut. More of that, bitch. More of that. Creating <laughs> union jobs to fix the potholes. She's, you know, she's boosting the economy. These are shovel she's ready. Yes, they're, yeah. more, they're wheelbarrow ready jobs. Um, did you see this though, where she got mad about the fact that people were catcalling her? I didn't see that. Yeah. She should be so happy. <laughs> exactly. Well, she got mad about it's it. It's a and, compliment. Yes, exactly. And, and here's kind of my point. I think this is something that lays on a lot of men right now. And obviously, I say this because the fat shaming was kind of your your rise to notoriety. Um, most women are attractive to men. Like you talked about those people in Canada, lingerie, right? I'm noticing a theme, yes. Axum party with midgets and lingerie. It seems like there's a lot of lingerie going on. That's okay. Uh, but the point is, these women aren't perfect, like you said, but men mm. find them attractive. All the yes. women that I know who are generally within the boundaries of health, most men would find attractive. We don't expect, and I think where men get really upset about this, and I would wonder where you feel as a woman who's been lambast, breaked over the coals for talking on the same issue, men, um, we don't expect ends. women to look one way. We don't expect you to be one way. We just don't want to be demanded or compelled to say that we have to love women every single way. We like women most ways, just not every single way. It's the compel it's the compulsion of finding something attractive. Is, is that kind of where you- I totally get it. Yeah. You make sense. I don't like really skinny guys because I feel like I'm going to break them. There's nothing against really thin men. I just, I feel like I will break you. Yeah. So I don't want to play with you. I don't find you sexually attractive. I don't want to pick you, my teeth with a with a dude. Okay, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So I get it. I get it in the reverse, and they can't force you to want to bang them. What, what? But here's the fun thing: is guys will pretty much bang anything, <laughs> and you're always hotter than somebody. That's kind of the fun. I made a post about that too. It's like life's good. You're hotter than somebody, but don't force somebody to think you're hot. Right. If guys are into like large black women, they're not going to like me and I'm okay with that. Right. Exactly. That's, is, that is exactly correct. And it, actually it's a little bit harder for men. A lot of people don't realize I've, I've seen a lot of these articles. We were talking about this uh, in the pitch meeting where they say, you know, men, if they're fat, they're just funny. It's more acceptable. We're like, well, hold on a second, but women aren't sexually attracted to fat guys. That's not a regular thing. Like we're the, they're the not court usually. jester. It's not, yeah. but it's the same problem. Right? And, yeah. and unlike fat women, women don't want to have sex with most fat guys. Whereas I had sex with a fat guy one time. <laughs> um, I did. I did. It, okay. it was almost like my penance. And it, it makes you feel really attractive, honestly. Like, he wasn't like the biggest, but he was bigger than I would usually go for. And it made me feel really hot. So, girls, do a fat guy at least once. You'll yeah. feel so All sexy. right. I don't know if I'm comfortable with this direction. What's the cutoff for, for skinny for you? What's the weight limit? I don't have a weight limit. It's just like a look. If it looks like you care about yourself and you don't smell weird, I'm okay. Okay, all right. Well, that's fine. Well, there are skinny guys who care about themselves. They're... I'm sorry I took your show so sexual. I didn't mean to. It's, it's okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm quite certain you did. Final question. You said you uh, you mentioned something about the Maxim party. Uh, were there a lot of gold diggers there? Yeah. I would imagine it's very uncomfortable. There were a lot of gold diggers there, and so many girls were so upset by them. But I, I'm not offended by gold diggers because they're going to have ugly kids. <laughs>
<laughs> like, it's not hot guys that have to buy women. So, like, karma is their bitches. Don't worry. Oh, right. Okay. If people want to uh, uh, follow a YouTube channel <laughs> and follow your tour, where do they go, Nicole? Hey, Instagram. Instagram, Inst please. Inst um, I, B, letter I, letter B, Nicole Arbor. On YouTube or Facebook, I'm Nicole Arbor, Nicole Arbor fans. I'm pretty easy to find. Well, no, it's not for Americans because you spell it with a U, just like Canadians spell color. So it's Nicole Arbor. Oh, you are. We're very inclusive, even with how many letters can come play. This is true. And they put a little <laughs> they put a little skinny guy line through the seven. All right, Nicole Arbor, thank you so much. We have to go wrap this show up in a nice bow. I appreciate you taking the time. I'll get back next year. Hey, kids. I, uh... See that socialism is starting to become a cool hip thing because of that crazy eyed lady, Alexandria Cortez, and of course, Bernie Sanders and his vape pens. So I thought I'd fill you in real quick about the realities of socialism. Socialism is like studying really, really hard on a test, and you get an A, and then another kid gets an F. The teacher holds a gun to both of your heads and now you both get C's. That's not very fair if you ask me. So when that crazy lady with her crazy eyes talks about socialism, she forgets to mention that it always ends in starvation and genocide. USSR, Cambodia, Cuba, North Korea, Venezuela, all genocide, starvation. Bernie Sanders has three houses and he wants some more. So he'll come to your parents' door and take your toys. It's a terrible, terrible, terrible idea. Was a riptide of an awesome show. That's what that was. Mm -hmm. Dinesh D'Souza, Nicole Arbor. Cockburn. Cockburn. <laughs> <laughs> Way to get rid of Rodigan before the last time. He could not make it through. It, honestly, I mean, if you were bringing in a deputy, I don't know how it works. I don't even know what that really means. I just no. know that's how it's pronounced over, uh, apparently, when we looked it up. I've never even heard of this term before. Wouldn't you, for PR purposes, just not, just find anyone named not Cockburn? <laughs> I love it. It's, it's also Kirsten Cockburn. So it's like yeah. a double case. It's like a really cheap. Well, now the cat's out of the bag. We avoided saying Kristen Cut because all the cop movies involve men. And we're like, it's not as funny as a, a woman. It almost seems like sexual. It almost seems Bill O'Reilly esque if we talk about her as a woman. No, uh, but dirty. we do. We have an incredible show. We have an unbelievable shows lined up for you next week. You know who we have, I believe, next week? Uh, Lee Dorn of How the World Works. Hasn't been around in a long time. He just sent us this article. Uh, not an article. He sent us a sheet with like. 80 fact checks. I think we just talked about this with Nicole, and I, uh, he is confirmed, I believe, for next week on Washington Post. They're fact checking. So we're just going to do an entire episode on that uh, <clears throat> just to show you how far, just to show you uh, how deep the roots are of dishonesty in the media. And that's not to absolve anyone on the right when they are dishonest. The fake news that we talked about on Facebook, of course that happens, and I hate it when the right does it. But it has been a, it's been a long standing history of the left yep. going completely. It is their full time job. They, they consider it that it's their privilege in life. Can you name me, put it this way. Fact check with their own facts. Can you name me any liberal journalist who, who, who was unbiased, who just delivered the news? Brian Williams? No. Dan Rather? No. Don Lemon? No. Cooper. Anderson Cooper? No. Because at one point, Walter Cronkite? Of course not. No. At one point, they were all considered journalists. You expect the Lawrence yeah, O'Donnells, the Rachel Maddows. None of them. I can't mm -hmm. say any, Probably the closest would be Shep Smith, and he's like a moderate Democrat, as far as I understand it. Yep. But none of them. Not one. Think about that for a second. Name me one. Who you, okay, Jake Tapper. I remember when I, when I, when I started 2009, I was at, at PJTV and Hot Air and Ed Morrissey. They were, t they were going, but you know what? Jake Tapper tends to be pretty good. Yeah, there you go. What about now? 
It's just it's just That's a matter of time. Even like a, just like two years ago, I used to think Jake Tapper was much more down the middle, honest. I thought that too. Even and then 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 they always veer. It's a curveball at the end. Starts having a couple of brunches with Chris Cuomo, and now you end up with this. I don't know. All right, so let me kind of tell you something here. I uh, um. We usually get into this last segment. I think Nakaj was the one who said that we should name this segment something because sometimes people are like, oh, I wish I, you'd upload this. We should, we should just like have a name for it, like uh, I don't know. Well, I've been Uncle talking Crowd about with, or something with or Courtney, uh, maybe writing, because we're, we're working on the Change My Mind book and we're trying to make it very uh, economical, maybe doing a pamphlet version for people who are in college, just the really basic arguments, and then maybe doing a longer hardcover for people who want to buy it as a gift. But there's another book that I've been thinking about for a while, The Self-Help Book You'll Hate. And uh, a couple of things I've talked about really uh, very consistently. There aren't a lot of key details you need to know in life to avoid the major pitfalls. As far as being successful and having uh, interviewed the most successful people in any of their milieus, whether it's Daniel Cormier, whether it's Brian Shaw, whether it's people like uh, Thomas Sowell, something consistent, you have to believe in yourself, realistic belief in yourself, and consistency and discipline. That's the good stuff. But today let me get to, to two really, really bad things. The worst things for the human soul. Um, I'll start with myself. I lied to my mom recently. Really bad, bold-faced lie. You know what it was? Sorry, mom. Turns out she needs bunion surgery. You know this. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I actually, I did the same when my dad had uh, melanoma. Uh, and I, I uh, just said like, ah, well, skin cancer, that's the easiest thing to remove. Now that's true, but not melanoma. My mom, I don't know a whole lot about bunion surgery, okay? All I know is that I've heard it's terrible. And my dad reiterated that saying, if you have to do two bunion surgeries, they say do it all because you'll never go back. Mm. So my mom said I have to get bunion surgery. And without even thinking, I said, oh, that's an easy one. <laughs> and turned around. And it's, it's, it's wrong. Okay, what I did was wrong. It was a cowardly act. It was a, it was a cowardly way of, of dealing with the pain of the issue and trying to mitigate it. That's the reality of it. I know people think white lies. And yeah, there is a difference in severity of lies. And we'll, we'll, we'll get into that. But it still is cowardly. Because I was sitting there going, uh, I don't want to deal with this right now. Ah, you'll be fine. Melanoma, ah, no big thing. Truth is, I should have dealt with it head on and been honest about it. Now, some of you out there, before I get into some of this advice, some of you are beyond help. Let me explain what I mean by this. You can take all the advice in the world, you can apply it, and you'll still be miserable. We've seen it. How many people do we know who read the books, they put up the affirmations, they have their prayer groups, they do all the things that they're supposed to do, and they have all, all the, the means, but they just never, ever get their crap together. And, and, and they're beyond helping. And by that, I mean you helping someone or me helping, but these people are not beyond hope. They're beyond physical help from people like you or I, not hope. Let me explain what I mean by that. I had an aunt, uh, Nicole. She's just passed away recently. Lung cancer, uh, socialized healthcare, I'll get into that in a whole other time, but uh, she was, I, I, was, I was always afraid of her. She was kind of mean. She was very mean, actually, as a kid. I just, I, the last person I wanted to say was with my aunt, Nicole. Uh, I didn't know this growing up, but she had a very abusive childhood. Not from my grandparents, but they couldn't afford to, to raise her during the Great Depression, so she had to go live with another family for a period of time while they got on their feet, and they were horrible to her. So it makes sense now, but when I was growing up, my Aunt Nicole scared me. I thought she was very, very mean-spirited, um, and I, I didn't like her. I didn't like being around her. I was scared of her. She never forgave my grandmother, okay? When my grandmother was dying from lung cancer, and... They prayed together and my grandmother apologized and she forgave her. I know some people say people never change. There's some, I saw it. Now this person would be beyond help because my entire life that I knew her, she was never a nice person. And then after this death, after this forgiveness, she was the nice aunt. She was the person whose apartment I wanted. It was an entire, I've never seen anything like it. It was like Ebenezer Scrooge only. It would have been considered lazy writing. So I've seen it. Okay, so some people are beyond help, but they're not beyond hope. It just means that, yeah, listen, as a, as a Christian, I, could, I can call it spiritual healing. You call it whatever you want. Maybe something happened with her neurotransmission. I have no idea. It was like a whole different Aunt Nicole. Go back to my lie. It's wrong. It's not altruistic. Almost all lies, pretty much all of them, span from cowardice. And the two things most corrosive to the human soul, while we talk about the things that lend themselves to success, are ironically success also that can really destroy people. An aspect of life with external factors, not entirely in your control. I've talked about this. Other factors at play. Uh, and cowardice, we've talked about this, which is internal, over which you have complete control. And the worst sin that you can commit against anyone, more importantly yourself, is lies of cowardice. And yeah, lies to avoid hurting someone's feelings like I did, those ultimately spawn from cowardice. I was afraid to deal with hurt feelings. And so I mm, sidestep with a lie. And sometimes I justify it, but it wasn't right. But as far as the lies that, that, that really mold your soul, 
It's the cowardly lies that you tell to save yourself. And I've done that. All lies are told to avoid discomfort. That's the reality, right? The difference really clocks in between telling a lie to avoid someone else's discomfort, like when someone asks if they look fat, versus telling a lie to avoid discomfort yourself, often knowing that that burden, that hurt, gets passed on to someone else. And I've done that too. There was a period in my life when I was in junior high where I've done that too. Or like lying to a friend when you need to pick them up at the airport. You say, you're unavailable. Really, you're doing nothing. You're playing video games. All of us have done that. That's a less severe version. But you're not lying to not hurt his feelings. You're lying because you don't want to pick him up at the airport. Okay? Lying about the broken vase that your mom really liked. I did that. Saying it wasn't you. Wasn't lying to save my mom. I was lying to save myself. But then you go to more extreme examples. Jesus, 30 pieces of silver. What about lying to someone? What about telling someone you love them? You ever done that? You ever tell someone you love them and you don't? I've done that. Or telling someone to trust you. That's something we say a lot, right? All the time. How, well, do we really know what trust means? This is why I said, because you need to be able to trust yourself. This is the actual definition of trust. It's the firm belief in the reliability, truth, ability, or strength of someone or something. I've really tried to curb using that word because we say it all the time. Trust me. Trust me. Trust me is a promise. How often do we say, ah, trust me, the Habs, the Canadians, they're going to go all the way this year. Well, hold on a second. That's a lie. There's no way you could ensure that trust. There's no way you could ensure that the Montreal Canadiens are going to win the Stanley Cup this year. Why should I trust you? Why just, just say I hope they do? Trust me, I know how to fix a car when you've never worked on a car. I did that once when someone said, do you know how to fix a starter? I said, yes. No clue. It was my own car, to be fair. It was my own Datsun, <laughs> and I ruined it. Turns out it was, a, it was a transistor or alternator or something anyway. But tr or tr trust me, I got your back. We well, you know that we have a lot of colloquialism, but we usually don't mean it. Right? Just like, ah, trust me, man. I got how often be real. I got you. Trust me. Lies of cowardice breed betrayal. And of those who trust us uh, most, those who love us most, of ourselves. We betray ourselves. And we all inherently know this to be true. This is one thing that's really uncomfortable for people to talk about. Because it's uncomfortable to admit it yourself, like I've had to do. Um, but human beings, we don't have a lot of respect for this kind of stuff. Like, long shanks is going to long shanks. No one really thinks of Braveheart and faults long shanks. It's a man who betrays Braveheart out of cowardice, who you can't stand. Bane, memorable. You can kind of understand it. You don't blame him for being a rival. You just have no respect for Catwoman for locking him in. The little guy who's necky steps, that, that, that uh, Australian actor. I always forget his name. But I like him. He was in Bloodline. Uh, he thought the money would save him from his own cowardice. How often do people insult cowards, for example, by calling them Pontius Pilate? Never. It's Judas. And that's what we use when we often call people out. And that stems from lies with cowardice. And there's a very real practical reason why decent people are revolted by that kind of cowardice. And this is, the, this is the one thing, again, with success, handling success, that's a whole other deal. We've watched people deal with success both really well and really poorly. People who've been on this show, some of them. Uh, it can hurt everyone around you. But uh, give you a practical reason. In combat sports, okay? Well, the first thing they teach you, one of the first thing they train is how to channel the flinch reflex, right? They teach you in boxing, for example, not to look away. So sure, you learn your footwork, you learn your head movement, you learn how to avoid taking a hit on the button, but you also learn that this is a fight. And every now and then, one shot is going to slip through. None of us are getting out of this life alive. And no one is getting out unscathed. At least a few shots are coming through. And when they do, you cannot ah, look away and turtle. That's the first thing you're taught, because you're just dead at that point, and you haven't hit the ground. Because the coward, the person who lies to themselves, the person who lies to others out of cowardice, thinks they're avoiding the discomfort. But you're just setting yourself up for the next shot. And that's what happens to people who live their entire life that way. When truth is coming down the pike, you turn it up to avoid the discomfort, and then guess what? There's more truth. Come on right into it. And I've done it. I've had times in my life where I've been there trying to avoid the discomfort with lies of cowardice. And do you know what happens when you turtle up and you look away? You don't see the next shot coming. You never see what's coming down the pipe. You're afraid to deal with the discomfort and you set yourself up for a world of hurt and it sucks your soul out of your body. And I've seen people who are on the twilight years of their life, who have lived their entire life that way. And you just get march stepped into the corner and taken out. Some of you are beyond help, but not beyond hope. Some of you have been telling these lies of cowardice for so long that they become second nature. There's nothing I could say or anyone, anything you could say for thinking of someone in your life that would be able, they'd even be able to acknowledge it. But most of you, the vast majority of you watching this, you can catch it. The very next time you're put in the hot seat, you have a chance to tell a lie that even you know people will believe and get you out of it. That's the test. Not do you lie when, do you, do you stop lying when you know you get caught? Do you decide not to lie when you know you can get away with it? 
Tell the truth instead. That's bravery. It's not only doing the right thing in the face of fear, but doing the right thing when present. That's the thing with brave. We've often said, heard, heard fearless. You've heard me say this before. They're fearless. Brave people aren't fearless. They're, fearless people are psychopaths. People who are afraid, they're psychopaths. Brave people do what's right in the face of fear. More importantly, bravery is doing the right thing, not only in the face of fear, but when presented with the equally available option of comfort through a lie. We often say there, there's the brave and there's the fearful. No, there's not the brave and the fearful. The brave are fearful. The world is filled with the brave, the cowards. It is filled with the leaders, the strong men, women, heroes, the people we admire, and the comfortable. And it's a lot easier to stop those lies of cowardice now, tomorrow. So here's what you do. People say, all right, what's, here's a life tip. Some of you are beyond help. But wake up tomorrow and say, okay, I will make it a point. Jordan Peterson talks about this. To never tell a lie to just, just to get myself out of a bind. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to allow myself to do it. You know, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to lie, period. Just tell the truth. You don't even have to always tell the truth. Just don't tell the lie. I, 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 after the bunion thing, I spoke with my mom. I said, you know, I'm sorry, mom. This is really gonna hurt. And it was very, very uncomfortable. But you know what? It was the right thing to do. And then, because we're being honest, I can be there for her as she needs me to be. So that's it. The two things that we've talked about with interviewing the best people in the world, believing in yourself, discipline, consistency, two things that destroy success and cowardice. And, and, and cowardice always breeds lying to avoid discomfort. That's what most of us, as human beings, we avoid discomfort. Leave the hard door open, as I always say. Do it tomorrow. You can do it. It's an easy step. It's a self-help book you're going to hate. You won't like it. See you next week.